sedans are definitely not dead. Despite whatever us YouTubers say, sedans are still one of the best selling types of vehicles out there. In fact, the number one selling vehicle in the country is a sedan. In this case, what we have right here is the Geely M Grand. The Geely M Grand, this is the comfort variant that we have right here, is the mid-grade variant, different from the top of the line spec that we reviewed a couple of months back. And it removes a couple of things that some people might not find necessary in their vehicles. And because of that, the price point is certainly much lower. What's going on guys, Roy Robles here for ZigWheels.ph and today we'll be reviewing what it might be my favorite Geely model out there. It's the Geely M Grand Comfort. All right, so starting with the front end of the Geely M Grand Comfort Edition, what we see right here is that there don't see any much difference from the top of the line spec model. You still have the same uh, large hood right here, giving it a more imposing appeal and imposing look, especially when barreling down the highway. This grille of the Geely M Grand might not be the cup of tea of other people out there, but for me, it was definitely a European look that this car is achieving or aiming for. Speaking of that European look, these full LED headlamps right here that almost resemble some sort of Thor's hammer kind of LED there, it really aspires to its parent company, especially when it's turned on at night. Now, if you're familiar with Robin Thicke right here, you definitely see a lot more straight lines right here in the side profile of the Geely M Grand. I particularly love the character line that runs across the entire length of the vehicle, starting from the headlamps all the way to the rear tail lamps. And one difference that this has over the top of the line spec is that gone is the chrome strip right below the uh, window here. Those 17 inch alloy wheels are certainly a welcome addition to this type of vehicle because even though they're multi-spoke, you won't see any trace of chrome in it. Instead, you've got that brushed aluminum look mixed with gun metal. It's just a classic look that's certainly gonna go down well over time. Now, if you've forgotten in our previous review of the top of the line M Grand, you have this nice light bar that runs across the rear section of the car that kind of gives you this ceremony every time you start it up. And in this case here, you still have your LED tail lamps there. So instead of having that light bar right here, you have this black bar, which is uh, decked in piano black that kind of blends well with the smoke tail lamps right there. Plus you got the Geely iconography, you got your M Grand logo right here as well. Right here below, you still have the same plastic trim here and you won't see any uh, exhaust ports as well. The exhaust system is right tucked underneath there. You still have a remote button in order to open the uh, rear hatch. There we go. We'll talk about that later. As well as another button to start the vehicle. I mean, it's definitely a nifty kind of tool that despite having that mid-grade price, you still have top of the line aspirations. So again, I wanna show you the trunk because it's definitely something that is noteworthy, especially in this kind of vehicle. Now, on, when you lift out the trunk here, you still have 500 liters of space. 500 liters, that's a lot. I mean, compared to subcompact sedans out there, this is definitely cavernous to say the least. And if you need even more space, those seats right there, even if you had the mid-grand variant, they can still fold uh, down 60-40 and uh, all your stuff will definitely fit in there. I can see myself traveling out of town even for a, a few days in this one with all my stuff, all my camera gear, even other people's stuff as well will fit in there quite nicely. So enough of the outside, it really looks great. Now I want to see what changes that they have in the interior to put that price point down, but like I said, this is my favorite Geely vehicle, and most of the reasons why that is is because of the interior looks and space. Let's check them out now. All right, so right now we're inside the Geely M Grand Comfort. The first thing you'd notice is that the steering wheel is leather wrapped, pretty much like the top of the line Geely M Grand, but everything else, the design stays the same, even the seats, they're shaped in the same way, but it removes or emits the white and blue theme that you have in the top of the line M Grand. Now, we received some mixed reactions with that. Personally, I'm not a fan of the white and blue color 
color scheme and I'm glad that they were able to put an all black interior right here. Another change that you'd see here is that instead of having a digital display cluster, you have your standard analog uh, dials right here and you've got a multi-information display right there in the middle, which is what it's supposed to be. And you've also got this huge touchscreen infotainment system and that's where the money is. Now, unfortunately, this does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but it has the next best thing. It has a screen mirroring system where you can download an app for, uh, on your iPhone or on your Android and you can mirror the screen right here on this huge touchscreen infotainment system. Now, the steering wheel does have some blank switches on it. It has that lone button up top here on the left for your cruise control. Now, you got the switches right here below to control your AC. It's not automatic, so you'll have to deal with that. Personally, I like manual uh, AC because it doesn't act up. And even if I do have automatic climate control on uh, the cars that I test, or even on my personal ride, I don't activate that and I use manual instead. All right, so the dashboard. The dashboard is, if you look at it, it kind of looks like it's made of leather because it has this fake stitching on it. Unfortunately, nope, that is hard plastic and that is just a design, which is which is okay. Actually, how often do you actually touch uh, the, <laughs> the top of your dashboard anyway? And then right underneath here, right on top of the shifter, you got this really spacious uh, area and it's a split level, by the way. It's a split level area. You got your single USB port there to connect your phone. You got a 12 volt power socket uh, right there as well. But one thing that is interesting here is on the passenger side, there is a hook there for, uh, for the passenger or even for yourself to put so that your stuff won't be sloshing around. So if you're doing groceries or if you have something that might move around while you're driving, you can just hang it right there and that's great. On the other side, the door cards do seem to be a little bit uh, iffy for me. You've got this weird fake stitching on it and again, you would think that this is made of leather, but that is not leather. But the door handles, they're nicely designed. They, they don't look like afterthoughts at all. They seem to be well integrated into the door cards. But unfortunately, all that is hard plastic. I would think that this would uh, hold better over time than the white leather material on the uh, top of the line M Grand. And I, I like how it looks. Plus, the steering wheel is adjustable for both reach, reach and rake. So despite having manual uh, seat adjusters for the front passengers, it's definitely fine. You can achieve your optimum driving position no problems. All right, so yeah, let's check out the rear of the uh, car and see how I fit in there. I think, like I said, this is an executive subcompact sedan. So that's basically a compact sedan. So let's see how I can fit right there in the back. All right, right here in the back, it's definitely a, uh, a surprise for me because despite being priced as a subcompact sedan, you still have a lot of space. Now I'm sitting behind my natural driving position, which is, well, it's just way back and leaned all the way back as well, but I still have a lot of space for my knees and my feet. You can't fit a third passenger right here because there aren't any provisions for a center armrest. The seats are nice and supportive and I like how the uh, the material looks. This is definitely gonna stand the test of time. It looks kind of, uh, kind of like a, this durable fabric that you see on shoes and I love how that feels. You got AC vents uh, to keep you cool. It is really appreciated to be a rear passenger right here because you do have a lot of space. And even if you're traveling long distances, it wouldn't be a that much of a problem. Speaking of traveling long distances, let's take this out on the road and test how this drives. I I'm very interested. Uh, I was quite surprised at the uh, when I first drove the Geely M Grand, the top of the line variant, and it quite had a, quite some pep to it, despite having some low numbers on the horsepower and torque rating. So let's see if it still is the same with this M Grand. All right, so we're behind the wheel of the Geely M Grand Comfort. Under the hood, you've got a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine that makes 102 horsepower and 142 Nm of torque. And yeah, it doesn't feel that way at all. You got a CVT connected to the uh, engine, but it certainly feels like it's got more than 102 horsepower. What sort of sorcery was Geely able to uh, put under the hood just to make this to feel it make it feel this way it's so smooth I wouldn't go as far as saying it's powerful my butt dyno says it's more than 102 horsepower and 142 Nm meters of torque you'll definitely feel it if you test drive this vehicle to know what I'm saying but it's never lacking in terms of power 
that's a surprise for me. When I first drove the Geely M Grand, the premium variant, the top of the line variant, I, I got the same feeling out of that. In fact, when I checked the spec sheet uh, for this car and found those lower than usual numbers, I didn't believe it. But here we are, and I'm still as surprised as I was when I first drove this vehicle. So in terms of suspension, you've got your, your, your typical McPherson struts up front and a torsion bar rear suspension. Definitely feels very solid. Every input that I put into it, it's, uh, it reacts to it quite nicely and I, I like how it feels overall. When it turns to NVH levels in this car, it's, it's good. Not just good for the price, but good overall. I mean, you can still hear a lot of the outside world uh, from within here, but again, with that suspension setup and the tire setup, it just soaks up all the vibration uh, from, uh, from the engine. The engine noise is set at the minimum as well. So kudos to Geely for making this vehicle as comfortable yet as engaging to drive as well. Now fuel economy for the Geely M Grand with the heavy traffic that we've been, we've been experiencing and uh, we've been driving this uh, through <laughs> horrible holiday traffic we still were able to get at least seven to eight kilometers per liter. And like I said, it's through gridlock traffic, all right? So seven to eight kilometers per liter in really heavy traffic. And I'm talking about six to seven kilometers uh, per hour average, that bad. But out on the highway, it was able to even itself out, 14 to 15 kilometers per liter, easy. So safety features for the Geely M Grand Comfort include dual airbags, you got ABS with electronic brake force distribution, yeah, you got a tire pressuring monitoring system right there, you got a backup camera with rear parking sensors, just the standard stuff. So pricing for the Geely M Grand Comfort, the mid-grade variant, starts at 945,000 pesos. So the top of the line is 999,000 and this is 945,000. If you consider the differences between this and the top of the line variant, that's nothing to sneeze at. But again, you have to ask yourself, do you really need all those additional trims? I mean, they look good and I'm sure if you go through the aftermarket route, putting all those things on your uh, Geely M Grand Comfort will cost you even more than that. But again, I'm, I'm happy with this uh, particular car. Imagine what you're getting for 945,000 pesos. You certainly do get a lot for what you pay for with the Geely M Grand. You can always opt for the uh, entry level uh, M Grand. That's uh, almost 735,000 pesos, but that comes with even less kit than this one. So that's a review of the Geely M Grand Comfort. Now, before I give you my final thoughts, here are three things I don't like about it and three things that I absolutely love about the car. So if there are a few things that I don't like about it, it's probably gonna be a few of the blank buttons inside the car. And the second thing that I don't like about the Geely M Grand, well, okay, now I, I'm not really particularly iffy about the alloy wheels, but if I were to change it, I'd probably be replacing it with simpler, uh, simpler wheels, kind of looking like a T37 or Rota Grids, if you guys uh, in the aftermarket crew know what, how, how those look like. It would probably look great on this car, but again, this is pretty much nitpicking. Those wheels could use some work. So yeah, let's put those alloy wheels in the negative section. And the third thing I don't like about the Geely M Grand is, well, there are a few things inside that were taken out from the top of the line variant, which I uh, didn't like. For example, the rear section did not have any uh, center armrests. It had, uh, it had just one USB port and it doesn't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Having the simplicity of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is a great smartphone integration system, well, yeah, you definitely would want to have that in your car, especially for modern cars. All right, so now that I've picked all the nits that I can find with the Geely M Grand, here are three things that I absolutely love about it. The first thing I love about the Geely M Grand is the looks. I mean, yes, looks can be subjective, but this is just absolutely perfect for me. I mean, it's a sedan with a three box design and it's got boxy proportions and muscular arches from the front to the rear. It's just, Something that I really find appealing, which is not quite sporty and not quite uh, elegant and too snooty. It's in right there in the middle. It's like a, a Goldilocks car for me and it's just right. And I love how this thing looks. 
Second thing I love about the GLM Grand is the engine. I mean, sure, it's got a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine that makes just 102 horsepower, but because of that CVT and how this thing drives, you definitely want to double check that spec guide because 102 horsepower, it really doesn't feel like it, uh, especially when you're driving in the city or even out on the highway. It feels like it has so much more, and I don't understand how Geely was able to you know, underestimate that. Most other companies would give you these power figures that are sometimes over. Uh, whatever that uh, that number is, but here they just gave 102 horsepower in the spec guide. I think it has so much more under the hood. It probably has something to do with that CVT. And the last thing that I love about the Geely M Grand is the interior. I mean, everything about it, it just screams simplicity and form over function. I mean, those seats, those fabric seats, they don't heat up in the summertime. And even though this thing doesn't have any tint in it, the air conditioning really blasts out cold air that sometimes I had to put it to the lowest setting just to be livable inside. Plus that screen, the touchscreen infotainment system, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but the screen mirroring system somehow works so well. The software is not laggy at all. And I kind of love it. It's the first time I found a car without Apple CarPlay or Android Auto that I really appreciate. And sometimes you have to have simplicity in order to make sure that you have a great product. This thing just delivers on every front that I love. And I kind of like this car already. And that's all I have to say about the Geely M Grand Comfort, but I want to know what you think. Drop me a comment in the comment section down below, and while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon so you wouldn't miss any of our videos. It's been a crazy 2022, and I'm looking forward to you guys joining us in an even crazier and better 2023. Once again, this is Roy Robles from zigwheels.ph, and I'll see you guys next time.